Okay, so I got in here at around 8.20 and uh, my time, the way I'm breaking it up, is that I'm going to basically do whatever I want to do until 9. And so I'm going to work on an Instagram edit real quick before I jump into the, the vlogs and then I wait for my wife to get here so she can help with the business. Uh, but it's okay. Masters Nationals, 35, 39, road race, road race in New Mexico at elevation. That's a big part of this. Now here's an interesting thing about Masters is that there's no categories. You, like you could be a cat four or you could be a cat one. It's just age. And so the group and the fitness level was wildly different. I mean, you had some guys here like Mr. Watson, absolutely murdering. And then you, and not to talk smack, but you had other guys who like, they're 39, they're probably a cat four, you know, they're just out here having a good time. Uh, and so the field, it's a little hard to read the field and what's gonna happen. And now on this two lap course, there is a kicker like you would not believe. Take it easy, dude, <laughs> but take it. I mean, I was all in. I, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give myself the best possible chance to win this thing. Dude, I wanted to get those stars and stripes so bad that I wanted to give myself an opportunity. Remember, go all line in effect. If you cut the course, take the fastest line you can. Come on, Dave. Come on, Tyler. Good job. by Mr. Watson and one other guy, I don't remember his name, but he had another teammate uh, there. And they caught us going so fast. So we get caught by the group. I think a bunch of people got blasted, right? And so it's a reduced group. And this is where it gets super sketchy and weird and annoying. So for me, what is my strong suit? My strong suit is really long, really hard, at elevation, heat. But a storm had rolled in, so it wasn't hot at all. And then, okay, three guys go up the road uh, Mr. Watson, that original guy, and one other dude. But they have a whole, we have a whole nother lap. And so it's like, yes, dude, this is perfect because these are the strongest guys in the group and they're gonna stay away for a whole lap? I don't think so, right? So they're gonna get smashed. Everything's cool. They barely have a gap. The official rolls up and he says, we're calling it because there's thunderstorms. So they're gonna call it. And we're like, what? So the whole group stopped soft pedaling. The official tells the breakaway that they're racing for the win. So then the breakaway is literally sprinting as hard as they can, going for the win. The group just is sitting up going, I don't know what's going on. And then they take a time gap at, at what they were considering the finish. What happened? Okay, so uh, super drama at the point at right now. Uh, a small group of three, a break of three, had like 10 seconds. 
and going into a whole nother lap. So like another like 35 miles with the climb, the whole thing, right? And then they said there's lightning. So then they stopped the race, but now Mr. Watson is saying that they actually finished the race and it was a race to the 1K sign. I don't know. We, this is, no one knows what's going on. But either way, this sucks that, you know what I mean? Like we went so hard, we, the whole race is, is played out for two laps. And now we're just basically gonna restart with one lap and. Everyone refills their bottles, literally takes an hour. Everyone completely recharges. Bit of a shit show. Uh, we've been sitting here for maybe 30, 40 minutes and now they're gonna restart us in about 30 minutes. Uh, there's a group of three that have a 20 second gap. Um, I don't know, dude. This is not really the type of race that I was hoping. Like, dude, we're racing right now. Am I pretty bummed? Yeah, because I, I mean, I felt like things were going well uh, for me. And look, we were not catching those three guys. I mean, the three guys that stayed away, they are absolutely the strongest guys in the group. But we were playing chess, and then all of a sudden, we're playing checkers. What a shit show. So I sit in, and I'm like, man, I've traveled so far, I've spent so much money, uh, I feel so good, I can't just not do something. So I just sat in so hard, and I didn't do anything. I mean, I was like, all right, I am Mr. Sprinter at this point. and I'm just sitting on wheels, everything was perfect. We come into the last turn, now we're only racing for fourth and fifth, but the podium does go out to five. And so I'm being as patient as I've ever been, and I'm like, yeah, but you know, it's like a sprint, I don't have a sprint, I have a GoPro in my mouth. You know me, dude, I'm just getting swarmed all the time. And it was so strange because like, we get in there and I'm like, okay, when's the sprint gonna go? And guys are just falling off, falling off. I'm like, well, they're, they're just waiting. Like they're gonna out sprint me. It was like, I, I didn't believe in myself. Honestly here, like the difference between fourth and fifth out of a pack sprint, who cares? Like, I just know that I'm making gains and to come and get fifth at nationals, not bad. Denians from Bass Lake, California for Ride Bikes, it's Tyler Pierce, your fourth place finisher. From Denver, Colorado, Neil Bezdet. The bronze medal out of Bonita Springs, Florida, racing for SoFlo Racing, presented by Protein X, Justin Boldy. Our silver medal, racing out of Boulder, Colorado, for Rush Racing, Giancarlo Bianchi. And your 2022 national champion out of Watsonville, California. For Specialized Project 74, it's Mike Guerin II. 
There you go, all zipped up. And in the Stars and the Stripes, Mike Kieran, your national champ, joined by Bianchi, Boldy, Bezdek, and Pierce. That is your men's 35 to 39 podium. But to take home a fifth at Masters Nationals, it's a, like the best road race result that I've ever had. One of the big awesome things about having the warehouse here is that I can actually make a really nice presentable box. So this person got two bottles uh, and two shirts. And so I can throw in some nice stickers here. Wham, bam. Thank you, bam. What's up, boss? What's up, Dad? So I'm a huge Moto fan, right? He's been riding since he was two. We got, he got this game, MX Bikes. It is a simulation game, extremely difficult. And I've always been better at my son than everything because I'm a stud. This is the first thing that he has been legitimately better than me at. And I can't stand it. I have, he's gone to school, true story. He's gone to school and I've sat here for hours trying to beat his ghost. And then I, I'm, dude, I'm just gonna break his freaking computer. Like I get so Ooh! mad. That was the like bars touching the ground. Yara. Hey, puppy, baby girl. Um, uh, I do not want to do this. <laughs> I do not want to ride. What is the goal, right? A lot of times, like Jeff Linder, right? We rode with him. I don't think he needs anywhere close to 20 hours a week to be where he's at because very rarely does he ride more than 90 minutes. And so why do you need to train for four or five, six hours uh, at a time, right? Like his main thing is just like sprint work. And so what was strange is that uh, when I only rode three hours a week for four weeks, you know, that was my decompression time for the year, uh, end of October, early November. When I came back, I was so fresh and I was hitting the best max watts I've ever hit. I did some almost 1100 watts for five seconds. A four digi, what? The more that you train and the fitter you get, the better you respond uh, to, to your stresses. It's kind of crazy. So like, obviously if you've ridden for one week, you're not gonna be able to get to be an FTP of 5.1 watt per kilo. But say you've gotten there before, say you've existed there for a while, and then you stop riding for years, you could come back and relatively get back to like that fitness quickly. What program works for you highly depends on your genetics, how long you've been riding, and what your goals are. And so you can't just say, oh, well, this is the way to go. And I've never said that. I've never said, hey, you have to do this. But for me, it really has worked. And I should have mentioned this in the FTP test, but so year one when I did this in December, my FTP was 298, uh, something like that. Year two, it was 311. Year three, it was like 330. Year four, it's 355. Okay, so that shows steady, sustainable growth. And next year, I will win Unbound 350. I will repeat nationals alter distance and i would like to go i'm still on the fence of this to be the world champion for 24 hours so when you're talking about each one of those is 23 to 35 hour efforts i gotta put in some training but i'm gonna listen to my body i'm tracking my calories so good and if i don't hit 20 hours i'm not tripping it was a big deal at first to hit that volume, to create that stress. But now my gear is so packed with TSS, it's not that important to get that in right now.
check out the soup that I made. Psych, I made it. Um, it's potato leek soup. It's super easy. It's my favorite soup. It's just russet potatoes and leeks, garlic. Um, I, it doesn't call for an onion. I put an onion in and then a celery and then vegetable broth and you just cook it all up and then you blend it and it's so good. And then I topped it with this fake bacon. That's my favorite. Ow! <laughs> You want mine? Yeah. No. Yeah. Look, fake meat in general, I just try to stay away from it, right? Like the wheat and soy, it's just like, what is it? But this stuff, it doesn't have any protein in it. It's zero protein, but it's made of mushrooms and it's really good. Like it tastes good, the texture is good, and like it's just mushroom. So two things, one, the tracking of the macros is so important because I thought I had enough protein and then I tracked it because yesterday I actually was way over. I was like at 200 grams of protein and I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have had that protein shake. But now I checked and I was only at 117 grams of protein after I put in the potato leek soup. So then I had another scoop of protein powder. Uh, the other thing is that I really want to try to show my relationship with her as much as possible, but it, it's hard. Uh, one, she's my baby girl, and I don't really want to film her a whole lot. But me and her had this like really awesome time in the shower. I was like washing her hair. She was playing with Barbies, and it was just really neat. Like me and her were just vibing in the shower. Obviously, I can't film that. I'd go to jail. I wish I could show you more of this, but it is what. It, ow, <laughs> dude, it got my hair. Oh, it's the bubs! Woo woo! It's the bubs! Woo woo! Yeah. On to the next one. Uh, I really am excited to show the growth of the business relationship between me and my wife and how she crushes at the warehouse. That's to me the story I really want to tell is building this business with a person that I built a business with, that's how we met. We ran that into the ground though. <laughs> Anyways. You ran into the okay. ground. Okay. As always, thanks for watching. Vegan Cyclist. Yeah. yeah.